we're going to do downtime actions. And we'll start with... Let's start with Ark, who probably had the the brunt of the of, of what has just transpired. Yeah, Ark is he probably just transferred all of the uh, lockbox over to Caroline. And he's probably taking the body back. Or is this back at the grotto? Uh, where are you going? I, I don't know if you want to take hostages to the grotto specifically. Uh, I would, uh, j just speaking as, uh, this is table talk. I would think that we would probably have set up a location with um, Captain Bowmore, or Commander Bowmore. Uh, to, should we get the hot, get them alive? a place where we could have interrogation set up to figure out where th how that information necessarily got leaked. So I so would rather, than a, rather than a fixed location, there is a rendezvous point, obviously in Brightstone, where a heavy prisoner transport wagon is waiting. This thing is pulled by four horses, and itself is a big iron paneled carriage obviously barred windows two very small barred windows at the top and very heavy duty multiple signs of attempts to break into this thing there's a few dents where bullets have have hit the side scratches scrapes these things are built to last uh as as I'm, I, I guess I'm like giving the toy maker like a piggyback. Like I have his arms tied in front of me, and I'm kind of just walking along. I was kind of just like, like, be like basically breathing out to myself. Like, what is a horror anyway? Like trying to talk to this thing that's now in my head. Like, and it's once again, it's your own voice that answers. Mm -hmm. So much more than a ghost. The spirits of the dead are fleeting, fleeting, fleeting. I am perpetual. Sounds interesting. Say, how many uh how many times does this work out for you? The whole possession thing. In the long run, I mean, I assume. Because you're not in a body right now, it can't have been great. Time is limited for you. Mortality will claim you eventually. For me, it's much more enduring. enduring. Very true. Yeah, I assume you still feel boredom and lack of stimulation. I would like, I'd like to propose an offer. Silence, waiting to hear you out. I don't have you exercised. In fact, I believe we may be able to come to some sort of agreement for a body share scenario. In return, you can help me in ways that a ghost can't. I'm not automatically hostile to any spirit or spook. I don't see why you can't have new experiences just as I wish to. Ooh. Okay. So. Devil's, devil's bargain. Mm -hmm. 
you can obviously heal the damage of possession as this thing steps back. It's not gone. And at times, you can accept an ongoing Devil's Bargain for a plus uh, a plus one to sp specific roles of basically you giving the or or a greater effects of giving this entity the driving seat but when it removes when it detaches from itself from uh, from that position of control you take a it'll be a, it'll be it'll probably be a level two harm so at the end of a scene there will be that damage mm. as you uh okay so level two harms are not easy to heal because you need to fill the clock twice, twice. can we make yes. it a level one this is the... okay a devil's uh i i see i see yeah. it's just it's a lot it's a, there's, it's a, a, hard, there's a consequence it's yeah. a lot. The fact you have to think about it may, means it's a good devil's bargain. <laughs> yeah. I assume I assume it wanted to be profitable for me as well, so I don't try to actually exercise it. <sighs> but but for, I get that, it. for that scene where you go, all right, do your thing. You get plus. <laughs> you get plus what? You'll obviously get plus one to a tune uh, yeah. because you're something that is instinctively connected to the ghost field, even more than a whisper generally uh will obviously give you the advantage there it's also doesn't really know the uh, know the bounds of the of what you're capable of so it can push you that little bit further so prowess rolls as well probably have that effect and we'll say that also during those scenes you can to sweeten the deal maybe you can negate damage damage effects because again it's pushing you harder than your own body would yeah. so any on any persistent damage you have the effects are negated by during that no. time that i'm being that time, possessed it's going, yeah it's going you you might have a broken arm this thing doesn't care for your well-being ultimately oh okay it's going to, yeah so any so i don't have like the the penalties like this crap jaw i have now yeah. it wouldn't affect my prowess oh that's cool that's it yeah yeah that's fine I was just like, oh yeah, great. So yes, I'll I'll accept this uh, ongoing devil's bargain, and his name is now Jeremy, unless he particularly protests to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the closest name that you can come up with. It seems that to actually pronounce the name that he gives you, it's not really pronounceable by by the human mouth. Yeah, can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy sounds it bit, is sounds a bit like Jeremy <laughs> <laughs> that was all I think we uh, unless someone else wants to have a scene I think we get back to the, the as, meet up point by this point yeah as as you arrive in Brightstone The carriage in question awaits at the agreed point. And rather avoiding the situation, Beaumont herself isn't present. However, Makes sense. a uh, one figure stands slightly to one side of the usual driving team of blue coats in the familiar off captain's hat cigarette sort of jutting out slightly slightly limp having been in the rain for a little longer than is probably longer than necessary hands fixed firmly into his pockets and the name badge identifying him as one captain slain templar nods towards slain I was wondering if you were gonna show up. We got you a trifecta here. Oh, sorry. So I can see. 
I've got the person selling the information. Supposedly saw the information, at least. She said it believed, so I thought it would be better to make sure that none of the And nods towards the box. I'm guessing that's what I assume is this. Nobody but, um, answers him. Templar will not go. That is the information. And then makes one final gesture towards. Uh, I'm assuming Onk's still dragging the Twain Anchor. Yeah. The, yeah. And he's got him like, oh, like, I've just been holding his arms now, so his legs have been dragging. And but I'm just kind of just like, yeah. The eyes. Someone. Clearly open as this this time. And that is the person that um, initially got the information to sell. We tied up every loose end that we could think of. He nods, turns, nods towards the blue coats. Nods towards the heavy lock box deal with it and the two two of the blue coats step forward taking the lockbox they simply move it to the edge of the edge of the street where it overlooks one of the canals and one of them puts his foot on the side and kicks it in as there's a resounding splash the only evidence that it was ever there are now the ever-extending ripples on the surface of the water. And what about these two plans? Templar kind of adjusts um, Marguerite on his shoulder. This one uh, just needs a case of forgetting. The other one nods over. Uh, might be prudent to figure out how the information got out. Make sure it doesn't happen again. I mean easiest way of making somebody forget is encouraging and he opens up the back of the the transport pulls out a old and very battered canvas bag sifts, sifts through a few of the contents taking out what probably passes for a couple of coins stuff it and stuffs it into her pockets scribbles a note saying today never happened <laughs> and pushes it into the in the inner in a uh in a lining jacket uh, jacket pocket that she's wearing him on the other hand well holds up the canvas bag We'll call it a purchase. Do we have a deal? I'm fine with it either way. Someone just needs to take up. This man's heavy. <laughs> yeah. Indicates one of the one of the, the remaining third blue coat. Get him in. Throws the throws the bag to you. And the looking inside and a quick cursory glance probably estimates this to be in the region of six coin. We got the facts. 
And of course, today never happened. And with a quite piercing whistle, the two two blue coats of the driving team jump back up onto the, the front. Third one slams the door behind as the toy maker is thrown into the back of the transport. Slams the door, bolts it, jumps up onto the back step as Slain watches it go off into the night. Pleasure doing business with you. Sure, Bowmore will deliver. Look after yourselves out there. Putting his hands back into his pockets, he crosses the street to a waiting cab, climbs inside, and he too takes off the, the other way. Leaving the three of you and the now rousing form of Marguerite alone in the streets of Brightstone in the late hours of the night. Before she's fully able to wake up, I think Emplar would put her down. And then we just leave the situation. She'll find her way back. I mean, how are we going to do a trade if we're not? Her showing up is... Tracio. Her showing up is the trade. I just... There is a possibility that she may be perturbed by the rough handling. And if so, she can't get it out on the blue coats. But we just have to hope that they don't know that Pratio is actually one of ours, I guess. And hope that they come back. <laughs> well, see, that's part of Templar's thinking is because he's not making the drop specifically, they could, as there is somewhat of an assumption that this could be that Paricio was completely unrelated because Templar is not showing up to make the trade. However, yeah. they have no reason to keep Paricio at that point because it doesn't matter to Templar. So it, it, it's once again, it's kind of a calculated gamble. <laughs> yeah. Mm. See, I'm, I'm not going to write Paricio out of the out of the story just from that. So. Sorry, as, you weren't there to hostage yourself. As Vale regains consciousness, sort of rub, rubs her head, checks her pockets, which now jingle, and the last thing you see is her checking that note, scrunching it up, and just throwing it into the water where it bobs on the surface before disappearing onto the into the dark waters below. Climbs to her feet and with one last look back towards you as the fog sweeps over her and yourselves. And the night, the rest of the night is yours. Templar. On. Oh, sorry. No, 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 yeah. Yeah. Let's let's do some downtime. I see how these. So we want to start with me or Ankh? Because originally I think you were let's... going to start with Ankh. Uh, yeah, then that was more because the, the the possession aspect. So we'll, ah. we'll jump over to you for actually, where, as the three of you make your separate ways to fulfill your own obligations, then we'll split off. So Templar. Where, where are you going and what would you like to do? Well, I'm going to de-stress, uh, which I guess for Templar means uh, heading to Six Towers, uh, a small abandoned hovel, uh, probably one of just the, you know, hundreds of abandoned houses in Six Towers that he's mm -hmm. squatting in, essentially. 
And so what is... Yes. And for him, going home means going to see his five-year-old son, who he is now going to spend the rest of the day with, doing what you would expect a single father to do. It's uh, it's late. It's quite late into the night at this point. So uh, by the time you by the time you get home, there's who who keeps an eye out when Templar is otherwise occupied. It's sad to say, for it's kind of a common thing in Six Towers. Nobody. Unfortunately, his son kind of has to look out for himself. There's not enough money to pay somebody. Templar honestly wouldn't trust a homeless person to watch his son, so... He trusts his son enough to... You know, the son has specific rules. Don't go out after dark. Well, after dark. <laughs> After a certain hour, you, you know. <laughs> Let me rephrase you that. You go out for one you're, hour. You're when... never allowed to go. You're never allowed to go out, son. I'm sorry. It's always dark. <laughs> After a, a certain window. hour. <laughs> um, and as you arrive back, the flickering light in the hallway that just about holds, despite the very jury rigged engineering and this this place otherwise likely wouldn't actually have any kind of uh, plasm throwing through flowing through the actual system all the all the wiring hang, hangs loosely on the roof and is attached to various lanterns along the way in the last like flickers and as you open the door to a very very spartan and un almost uncomfortable location you see he's fallen asleep in a big pile of old blankets that passes for a bed but yeah still for templar it's making sure that his son is okay so he probably move some of the blankets, making sure not to actually disturb his son, to cover him up, making sure he doesn't, isn't cold. E Trying to make the place as comfortable as possible, not necessarily for him, but for his son. Of course. And yeah, he stirs a little bit and doesn't wake and make me all stressful, please. Or stress. As you get a in the in the old chimney, you're able to get a small fire going, enough to warm the room at least to some extent. And once again, he turns slightly more fitfully in his sleep. As you sit by there, the only light from the flames illuminating your face. As the night takes hold, Unk. What would you like to do? Um, I'd also be indulging my stress. And what does that involve? Uh, for me, it involves taking a trip through the canals uh, on my own little gondola and just it's mainly for like unwinding, but I also deal with whoever like comes up saying they have a problem. And this time it's less boring because I have a new companion to converse with. <laughs> Good old Jeremy, the conversationalist. <laughs> Make me that check. Okay. As especially in the, the late hours of the day, as it goes on, into the early morning, you hear the bells chime out respectively for the hour of silk, then wine, then ash. And, oh. 
Didn't clear a lot of stress there. Um, as you are flagged down by a bystander who waits in one of the lower levels where the, uh, the steps descend to the water's edge. Because you, you see the wave in the in the half in the half light. I row over and I was like, "Yes." And the figure looks at you, and uh, at the moment, working the working the the bright water in bright stone, going right down the length of it. They stop for a moment and uh, say, uh, "Where should we do?" Old Covenant Night Market. Can you do it? It's quite a way. For sure, no problem. And as they step aboard, there's the brief rock, and the journey begins. It's about ten minutes into the journey. It's quite a it's quite a passage going right around the the, the down the Empress Way over the north of Charter Hall and then south and then into Night Market itself. It's about 10 minutes into the journey. This figure is otherwise silent until they suddenly... You've heard it too, haven't you? The music? Or the whispers. They start, they start the the me the music. They start sort of conducting to an unheard, an unseen orchestra. Well, hearing might be the wrong word, but I have experienced it. Strange that of all the gondoliers, this time in this city, and it was you that approached me. Uh, I could say the same thing for you calling out to me. I don't believe there is such a thing as coincidence. No, I don't either seems to me that fate itself conspired to have us cross paths. But now we're at an impasse, for while fate may have led us here, we decide how it goes. Name's Ankh. Yeah. Leans forward and... Andal. A pleasure. Andal? Yeah, A-N-D-A-L. Ah. So, Andal, what do you do for a living? As you wind your way down Empress Way, he glances towards the south bank of Charter Hall and... For a living the mundane right on the doorstep over there I keep the books for several of the physicers legal officers nothing quite so interesting as what brings us together this evening well Looking at him, could his form be recognizable if it was shrouded in a certain robe? Has he been to one of the functions before? No. No, as in I don't recognize him, or no, I know he hasn't no. been there. He hasn't. He hasn't been there. Okay. Uh, if you have heard the music, 
Would you like to sing with the choir? Pray tell me more. There the is... Song? There is a meeting. And a place where we... Add our own instruments to the symphony. I know I said Old Covenant is Night Market. But I do believe this journey will not end there. A bit of a detour, then. A scenic route, if you were. As I lead him back to the grotto, I guess. As you as you disappear into the from any viewer on the streets who see you, rather than turn in the southwards and down uh, the old moat, there's the last thing that any passerby might hear is, "I've heard it in dreams, and it stays with me in waking thoughts." However, to join the choir would be quite the adventure. And disappear into the night. Caroline. No dead. What would you like to do? Um, get back uh, my shack under the bridge, check on Eugene, and see if there's anyone in ghost who's here who's there for me for a job or any or any, any, any sort of help eugene is currently going through a very old couch which was dumped under the bridge quite some time ago He's eating his way through about a third of one of the cushions, just stands there, bits of fluff hanging out his mouth and stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a oh. good boy. At least it's not your couch. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to make a... Let's make a fortune roll to see if there's any other presences in the area. Oh. For the time, it is quiet. Just you. And the occasional bleating of Eugene. And uh, save for the presence of an old friend, so to speak, once you step inside. Okay. Well, gonna go inside and talk to. My my dear Violet, what uh, what happened lately, and uh, made me got her opinion of all of this cult stuff. It's a little bit wondering what. There's an old chair in the corner, which uh, the the doll sits on at all times, just staring out into the into the rest of the room with those glassy eyes that you can't help but feel follow you around the room despite their inanimate nature. And what do you say? Something very curious has happened uh, lately. I've been in, in contact with this organizations sort of religious one 
Um, do you happen to have heard anything about uh, the, those people? I don't remember if we got a name for the entity they were worshipping. Oh. No, we didn't. So I'm just going to give her ba a basic description of the of the place and the way we got to contact with the, the dream and the, the the scene near the docks. Okay. Are you are you doing a role here for um, to relieve stress or anything like that? So just a... no, no, I'm just okay. having a friendly chat. Friendly chat. Okay. You. The way of communicating is not not usual, to say the very least. You feel acknowledged and it's as the, the night gives way and you hear the fairly distant bells chime at the hour of, uh, what would it be, uh, the hour of wine. Roughly equivalent to about two in the morning, as sleep begins to overtake to be. And in that silence of the night, you see a distant undulating desert sands spiraling almost creating tornadoes which form and disperse within moments and stepping forward into this seemingly unending plain wilderness you come to the side eventually come to the side of a cliff and looking down you see hundreds of figures different races creeds cultures and in time with the song swaying backwards and forwards and in, and from the one end the crowd seems to split parting as a figure old hunched over and rags makes their way through and as they do the crowd closes up once again seemingly embracing them and a light begins to burn out where the eyes would be from under the hood And as you watch the scene, the song emanating, almost echoing in your mind, you're awoken by the sudden streaming sunlight of that brief glimmer at dawn when the shattered sun burns on the horizon. The light streams in, hitting your eyes, and you awake in the early hours of the morning. And there's a glimpse towards the doll, which head, its head, as you look at it, its head falls to one side, almost question, looks almost questioning, as if to ask, do you hear it? Yes, yes, that was, what was that? Um, that's not my kind of weird. Did you hear it too? Did you did you saw it? You don't get such a defined response. 
again seems to be more of the influence that whatever this small porcelain creature is has knowledge of it but answers are not forthcoming at this point and as the brief moment of natural light dwindles and the lights once again flicker returning the streets to their usual ambient half light You have just finished listening to this week's episode of Blades in the Dark, What Happens in the Dusk, part of the Domain Gaming, written and told by LifeSpark and Wyvarian. A special thanks to you, the listener, and if you wish to continue supporting us, subscribe, like, and share. As always, comments are welcome. Until the next chapter, to those without direction, follow the lights in the quiet darkness and listen to the silent whisper. Do you hear it?